How are things with Larsa currently? Is there a path to peace? Not right now. Absolutely not. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny Murphy. And I'm Evan Real. And I gotta be honest, Evan, I'm feeling a little, with it, sun setting at 4 p.m., freezing cold in New York, and seeing what you did in L.A. last night, I'm a little upset that I am not a West Coaster because you went to Kathy Allen's Christmas party. Yeah, I went to Kathy Allen's Christmas party, and Danny, I wish you were there because it was basically like BravoCon round two, and only Kathy Hilton could pull that off. There were so many housewives, so many Bravo celebrities. I was having deja vu but you know in this bravo verse so many things happen on the daily by the minute by the millisecond and so there was a lot to catch up on with these ladies especially kathy and kyle and they were together yeah yeah all three sisters were there the destiny's child of, oh. of the bravo verse were there i i do wonder like if you had to ask kathy and kyle who beyonce was i like who who is the beyonce of that cheer because we know kim is definitely michelle and happily 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 I feel Kathy would sit silently until Kyle answers. And what, what do you think Kyle would answer? Kyle would say that Kathy's Beyonce because Kyle wants peace. <laughs> yeah, well, do you know what? Both sisters want peace. That's true. They were, in, they were in their peaceful era yesterday. And I, of course, had to ask Kathy about making up with Kyle. I mean, because just a year ago, like literally a year ago, November 2022 was when we were watching that dramatic Beverly Hills season 12 reunion unfold and the, the girls were not getting along and now they are. So she told me about the reconciliation and she got really choked up. It was really emotional. I think that families, babies, weddings, um, when I saw Kyle and Aspen at Kim's daughter's wedding, I walked in and it was a very quiet hair salon. And Kyle said, she was getting her hair washed, very quiet, no music. She goes, oh, there's my sister. And I literally was like, it was emotional. I was kind of surprised to see her like literally breaking down in tears, talking to you about it. And also the moment too, it let you know that it was actually like, oh, this is, a family and it's genuine because it's not like Lisa and Meredith at lunch where they're just like, oh yeah, we said what we said. It's like when Kathy, when she was like, she called me my, her, my sister and I started crying. And then also for like Kath, Kyle to kind of jump in during your interview with Kathy made me love, because it's like the Richard sisters, you love them because of their chaos. And I feel they really are so delightfully chaotic at all times together. No, it was so chaotic and we I was so happy to be <laughs> ambushed by Kyle Richards as I was asking Kathy about how she's going to get Kyle back in the dating pool now that she is separated from Mauricio and Kyle immediately was like, "Oh no, 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 we're not going to go there." What what do you what do you hope happens there and as Kyle explores her dating life? I'm not, not going. There. Well, when you did tell me him sang to you? Oh yes, Kim sang to me. Be okay, so the man, who who is who in Destiny? Speaking of Destiny Child, you're like, which one again sang? So continue. Right. How did Kim sing? Maybe Kim is the Beyonce of of her sisters. But yeah, Kim sang to me because a, a, another big development in the sisters' lives is the addition of their new baby niece, London. Paris Hilton's uh, new daughter. And so I was asking Kathy about her new granddaughter, about you know Kyle and Kim about their new niece, and. Apparently the meeting, apparently some of them have already met London over FaceTime and an in-person meeting is happen, happening imminently. And so I was asking Kim how she is preparing to meet baby London. And she says, well, I like to always greet my nieces and nephews and grandnieces and grandnephews with a song. And then she just started singing her song to me. You're giving the gift of song. And, you know, I don't want to do it right now, but when I walked in to meet Phoenix for the first time, and I said, oh, and he was so, and I go, sing, sing a song. And Paris goes, oh, my God. This might be up there for a Bravo's award next year because original song, him is out here touring. And by touring, I mean singing to you. <laughs> Lisa Barlow, watch out. Uh, wait, okay, but besides the Kim sing, what and the Hilton reunion, what do you feel was the one of the crazier moments that you saw go down here? And also, two questions I'm asking you, that and describe what the inside of the party was like. What is the vibe going on? Is it all intermingling whenever you're ready? Okay, so I was on the carpet for a few hours before I actually got to go into the party. And when I got into the party, it was amazing. Like there was like fake snow. No, like 
real snow but fake snow i don't really know what you call it because it like wasn't naturally made but it was like real snow okay lab grown snow lab grown snow yes like a lab grown diamond there was lab grown snow all over the backyard of kathy hilton's place and there was a, and also a- might we add not the snow that Lisa Renault would ask to read about in the bathroom. Continue. Yeah, not, I just not want to clear that air. I'm not trying to get sued. Go on. <laughs> totally, totally elemental. Real frozen wet snow. Um, so there was snow. There uh, were s'mores making stations. There was ah. a, many bars. And there was even a, a photo booth that was uh, made in the likeness of the hat store in Aspen. And you could pose with a Wasabi? hat. Wasabi? Yeah, yes, yes. What, Kasabi? Wasabi? What's it called? Kimasabi, I want to say. Kimasabi? Something like that. They oh. they they recreated the Aspen oh. Hat store and then there were like bedazzled bottles of uh tequila that you could hold. It was it was truly a phenomenal party and it was all sponsored by Direct TV. But before I got into the party, the thing that excited me the most, Danny, was seeing Mary Cosby show oh. up. I saw her on the tip sheet, Danny, and I said, there is no way this woman has left her closet to come all the way to Los Angeles and party with Kathy Hilton. And then- But like a Christmas miracle, Mary. Uh, to Mary, Mary arrives, hello. <laughs> Mary arrived. Yes, I, I looked out of the corner of my eye and I saw like purple and sparkles. And then I was, honestly, I was so overwhelmed with how incredible she looked in person. Not that I didn't, think she is a a beautiful woman but like she really does have a glow about her in person and maybe that's just jesus i'm I'm not really sure but uh she uh she had some hot takes to share with me on the carpet specifically some hot takes about her old pal jen shaw who is now teaching elizabeth holmes how to get abs in prison make the best of what you got good for her would you take a workout class from jen shaw would i take what a workout class from jen shaw yeah i'm just trying to like get the stain off the show from her like trying to re, re like reinnovate the show and like create a whole nother you know place and a safe place for us yeah that's what we're, we're i'm aiming for nothing from jen Shaw. like bless her heart and i i know she's doing what she needs to do but i'm out of everyone i had the most and too much and i'm good jen fonda yeah <laughs> wait and can you confirm or deny that I saw online, Mary and Angie were like vibing together because that is a 180 from what everybody saw at Trix Mattel when they were like, when Mary's like, stop talking to me. Yeah, no. And Mary and Angie uh, talked to me about that. They were like, did you notice who we're hanging out with tonight? And I was like, yes, I did notice. Let's talk about it. And huh. so I guess both Angie and Whitney were able to move past their issues at the reunion, which according to Mary, the reunion was buck wild and crazy as hell, especially for Monica. She said Monica was getting all the heat, had to answer a lot of things. And she also said that she has become recently tighter with Monica and that she has been texting Monica every day, guiding her through this very challenging time because it it seems like after the reunion, Monica might not have many allies within the group, but Mary's there for her. And Mary's- the sound of that, Mary sounds like she's two weeks away from texting Monica. Hey, you want to join my church? But go. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like Monica might. She might. But I also feel like we might. Oh, in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's been some movement in these dynamics with the Salt Lake City ladies, and it seems like a lot of that happened at the reunion. The girls also told me that, and we've been hearing this on, you know, within like the, the Bravo verse and, and the the blogs and stuff that apparently there is such a shocking twist during the finale that is going to blow everyone's minds. But what they did say is that because the finale was so shocking, the the whole reunion was basically spent unpacking the finale. And so they felt oh. like there was so much left unsaid. They were like, this could have been like a six part reunion. Um, but they were like, yeah, they, they were kind of bummed that they didn't get to address a lot of the stuff that happened earlier in the season. Because I feel, currently as it stands, Lisa Barlow has a lot of explaining to do. So I feel a lot of the ladies might have some unfinished business with her as well. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm excited to see how the reunion goes though. I am so excited for that Salt Lake City reunion. And I am so excited that we have officially entered the Morgan Wade era on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And can I say, obsessed with her dynamic with Kyle. Yeah, wait, I love her vibe. I love her energy. I love her. I love the way she speaks. Like she, I, it just oh, talked to me like that all day, every day. I don't know I, what accent that is, but I'm into it. 
I also need, like, I want to do a PSA. If I, when I'm in my mid fifties, and if I'm bringing my Birkin bag and my Gucci cardigan to get a tattoo with like a thirty something year old singer, mind your business. I'm right. doing just in my mind. I'm like, I'm doing just fine. Like that <laughs> seems like a great afternoon. I do love the juxtaposition of like her bringing her Birkin to the tattoo parlor and then also getting like a cutesy little Saturn on her hip bone. It's like, it's giving like sophisticated real housewife in her fifties, but also like 20 year old Chica just living her best life ever. And also that moment when the first thing she did after the tattoo was run on home to Mo. Love Bean, love Bean, every time grinds every gear in my body, the love Bean. But when she just showed it off, she's like, well, guess what I got today? I'm living for it. Ah, I love it. And honestly, like Kyle seems to be in such great spirits, a great vibe, a great energy with herself, mm-hmm. but not with Sutton Strack. I feel, okay, so here's the thing, Danny. I felt like after this week's episode of Beverly Hills, I was like, there, there is no coming back no. for them. Will you listen for a head. second? You are is that in touch? It's kaput. That's a wrap. It's over. And like, honestly, f- from what we saw on this last episode during this like dinner party meltdown situation, like probably better for both of them. But Kyle told me at Kathy's party that this friendship break is not permanent, that she is one who forgives. She is one who forgets. And she suspects that she and Sutton will be friends again. However, you know Sutton calling their whole friendship a farce? Mm-hmm. Well, Kyle wasn't buying that and basically was like, girl, you're just begging for attention. You are thirsty for some fan interaction. What is your reaction to Sutton summarizing the friendship as a farce? I thought that was, I thought that was pretty bold of her. I mean, uh, just trying to be dramatic and get attention from the viewers because I, I mean, I don't, she knows that we're friends and that she made some comment about, she realized in Vegas, what did I do in Vegas to her? She was the one who had the ridiculous meltdown. So I don't know, I, I was, because here's the thing, like, I thought it was very bold of Sutton to summarize their friendship as a farce, but then it's also really bold of Kyle to say it's like, she's only saying that for attention. So I'm like, are we on the bold side? And also, oh, truly, because one of the boldest sides was when Kyle was like, oh, I'm taking a friend break from Sutton before telling Sutton that. (laughs) (laughs) When I mean like, well, their friendship, friend break, everything seems dramatic. I don't think it is quite at the level of Gertie and Larsa's because Miami is in a whole other league. And you chatted with both of them too at Kathy's party. Yeah, I was actually surprised that both of them showed up to Kathy's party because- And they're the only Miami girls there, right? The only Miami girls there and they couldn't be at a worse place (laughs) in their uh, friendship or lack thereof. So as we know, it's been a really contentious season in Miami because of- Gertie's breast cancer revelation and the way that she asked Larsa not to share it with the rest of the crew. And then Larsa proceeded to share with the rest of the crew six hours later. later. Um, And Gertie was explaining that watching it unfold on the show has sort of reopened the wounds surrounding that situation because she, she sees how Larsa like actually moved through, through that experience. And she seemed to be really upset of course, with her telling the other half of the cast, but I think she was also really unnerved that before telling her cast members, Larsa told these like two chicks who were hanging out before the Marcus Gordon homecoming or or welcome home party. So I don't know, but- That makes me realize Larsa probably also told her driver who drove her home from the lunch too. <laughs> if she got seamless that day, told the seamless delivery part. You know what I mean? Like it seemed like she was just mentioning it all. Yeah, but you know, then I spoke to Larsa, and Larsa was, you know, in- insistent that she was merely just trying to, you know, rally the girls around Gertie. She meant no harm by it. She also did mention that they were arguing at that lunch table for like thirty minutes, and she came from her perspective, came to the lunch thinking we're here to talk about you calling me fake to us but <laughs> um like sorry sorry girls um she thought they were unpacking that whole situation that went down at our live show for virtual reality in february um and then they were unpacking that unpacking that unpacking that and then she felt like gertie was like by the way i have cancer so she said that like it was 
her reaction was due to the whiplash of getting that very sensitive information in the middle of an argument that was about something so mm. superficial compared to the information that Gertie was sharing with her. So, and I didn't know how to react to it because I wasn't expecting it. Like you're yelling at me for 30 minutes and then all of a sudden you tell me you have cancer. Like I honestly was like shocked. I don't know, but Larsa said they're not friends and she seemed to be like good on not ever becoming friends with her. Oh, well, uh, I think oh, Gertie's cool with that too. I think, I think maybe they could just, yeah, they could just kind of agree to disagree. And I feel unlike, uh, some of the other ladies in Miami that keep on like trying and failing. I feel like they're kind of just like, I don't, we're, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, just, okay. they're better off without each other. I mean, well, I can't wait to see what happens at that reunion. It's a, there's a lot of exciting reunions upcoming. I can't wait for the best. Yeah. I feel like definitely Gertie's energy was like, she's going to be coming into that reunion real spicy and hot. And I can't wait to see what happens. Cause it just felt like she had, a lot to say. By the way, it's about what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And the issue I think with Larsa is that she doesn't understand that. She thinks that everyone's gonna be just a blind follower and we're not bobbleheads here. All of us have a great head on our shoulders and we understand what what consequences are and we understand good and bad and some people don't. So they're on the slow train to who the hell knows where. And a lot to get off her chest as it pertains to Larsa. And the, the other thing is too, Danny, I feel like I know that Lars is close with Alexia and Lisa, but I feel like for the most part, everyone is cool with Gertie. So I feel yeah. like Gertie's going to have a lot of support at the reunion. And I don't know if Larsa can expect the same support from people like Julia, obviously, who can <laughs> so Call eloquently her a goat. compare her to a goat. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And Dr. Nicole and Adriana, all these women who have historically butted heads with Larsa, I do think at the reunion will probably show up a little bit harder for Gertie. But again, Larsa's a really strong girl and she can hold her own and she'll probably she'll have Marcus right behind her. Oh, right behind her. Okay, and a final thing before we wrap. If you could sum up Kathy Hilton's decor and vibe house in like a word or two, what would it be? Okay, so I'm actually really glad you asked this, Danny, because okay, so before the event starts, I have to walk in and I'm like, can I use the bathroom? And so I walk in into the all mirrored bathroom. I can see, I can see Wait, myself. That's my hell, but go <laughs> on. Was, I don't need panorama of me peeing, but go on. If, if, if you're a Hilton, you like, you want that's the whole true. view, but like for, for us regular folk, I don't, I don't know if I need it. Anyways, what I was super surprised and thrilled and delighted to see is that Kathy being the proud mom that she is, she has the bathroom counters like stocked with Paris Hilton fragrances, men's cologne, women's fragrances. Like if you are a fan of Paris Hilton fragrances and I am, my signature scent is her first men's cologne, which came out in 2006. I've been wearing it since I was 15. It is so good. It was right there waiting for me. It just oh, spritzing it on myself after washing my hands in this all mirrored bathroom just felt so religious and magical and holy. But then Danny, uh -oh. I walked downstairs to the parlor where it's like the it's where you walk out to her beautiful backyard with the pool and the uh, her place is so stunning but before you get to the beautiful backyard you see this beautiful like photographic mural of iconic images of famous women including Paris and Nikki Hilton including oh. Lady Gaga including Madonna and and the most exciting part of all, including a pregnant brunette, naked Britney Spears. Oh. I, I have to send you this picture. I, of course, snapped a picture. I was like, oh my God, this is like my dream piece of artwork, but it was so beautiful. And I love that in the Hilton household, Britney is revered celebrated as the, the pop princess that she is. Um, other than that, I will say that Kathy had a Christmas tree with a cardboard cutout of her face plastered right in the middle which I love. I, you know what? If I was her, I'd be doing the same damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe Kyle would be on that wall next year. Right, exactly. Well, it was it was her cast photo from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And there were so many housewives mingling and mixing around. I was like, could she maybe, would she ever come back to the show? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it. I mean, if you guys would also be down for it, let us know in the comments because I would love to see that too. Yeah. All right, well, um, cheers to uh, Christmas at Kathy's. She provided us with so much 
great content. God bless.